Yeah. Kathy Stevens? Correct, yes. Oh, what a dear, dear person. Yeah. Kathy. Yes. Where are you located? I live in Portland, Oregon. Wow. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Oh, I've been to the Japanese gardens there. They're just awesome. Oh yeah, that's I live a half mile from there, so that's part of my walk that I do. Wow. <laughs> Lucky you. Wow. We had a Portland, Oregon uh, question in trivia night a few nights ago. Oh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, Susan, do you remember what happened? Because we couldn't get it. And <laughs> Parker keeps promising to make his questions easier, and they seem to get more layered and more difficult. Every this one was really hard. I don't know what it was connected to, but he likes to give several different ways to answer one question, and one of them had Portland, Oregon as a reference, but I can't remember what it was. It was pretty it was funny, though. It was the rock. It was the rock group of indie rock group that started. Oh, it was oh, the, the answer was the Decemberists. December. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> but even? Yeah. Yeah. After I meet somebody the first time, I'll just say, "By the way, do you know what the capital of Oregon is?" And a lot of people say Portland and then, Salem. Salem. Oh, Salem. Yeah. Wow, that's right. tricky. Yeah. All right, my dears, we are going to start. Hello, sissy. Hello, good morning. How's Brian today? Is he joining us? He'll be joining us, yeah. Good, a little good, slow good. Today. Beautiful to see you as <laughs> always. Thank you. All right, my dears, we're going to mute you all and we're going to begin. You ready? Right there is fine. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to this Sunday. What a week we have had. As many of you know, we've been having our Monday night dinners to go every Monday from 5 to 6.30 at the UU Meeting House. Folks come in through the Hendricks Hall door and there's markers all along the way marking six feet and they go out the back door um, into the backyard. Uh, signs are up and there's volunteers everywhere from the UU Meeting House, from SHIM, from Sharad Hayam. It's a beautiful interfaith effort. I sit outside on the bench in masks and gloves and I greet people along with two other volunteers. We hand out the masks and the gloves and we welcome folks and we listen. We also call out to folks who are going by, who work on Orange Street or who are driving by on bicycles. And we asked them if they would like a hot meal given by kitties or and a cup of coffee, a part of which Val Hall makes every Monday. Just wanted you to know that Val Hall is still making coffee. <laughs> and the sugars and creamers that were donated and a hundred masks that we have to give out, sewn by act masks, and the gloves given by another, and sometimes desserts donated by others still. Lydia Sussex made brownies for us a few weeks ago, which we enjoyed very much. The fear of contagion, living beside the joy of being present, of offering love, of listening to what it is like not to have enough. Welcome to another Sunday where we seek to balance love and fear, hope and despair, beauty and the burning down of what can no longer stand. Welcome. And the, uh, all of the announcements are printed in your order of service. And I'm wondering if Gabrielle is here with us today because it's her birthday. And if she's here, then we can sing to her, but I don't see her. Does anyone else see Gabrielle with us today? So Gabrielle, wherever you are, happy birthday, my dear. So now we, you are all muted and the unmute button on Zoom is no longer there. So it's time for the chalice lighting, um, but you will have to unmute yourselves if you wish to say the chalice lighting together. So Gary will get in his place and we will say the words that we always do with this flame. <laughs> We renew our commitment. Our, to our commitment is just to fashion. Wait for the candle. And Hold on just a second. <laughs> we renew our commitment 
commitment to justice, justice peace, peace, and compassion. And compassion. And it is time for the affirmation, which is printed in your order of service. <laughs> oh, Nigel, I'm sorry, that was your cue. Yep, there we go. I'm getting used to it slowly. And it is the time in our service now where we greet one another. But we, before we do, we ask if you are new today or returning after a long time away, we'd love to hear you and see you and have you tell us where you are coming in from so that we can greet you in good UU meeting house style. Invitation only, of course, and you will need to unmute yourself if you uh, wish to be. So uh, you can either unmute and speak or just raise your hand and we'll try to try to see you and get to you. Anyone today? All right, then let's take a moment and greet one another. And in order to do so, you will have to unmute yourselves because we can't do so. So please take a moment. Good morning, Hi, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Jack. Hello. Hello. Good morning, sweetie. Hey. Hey. Uh, Greetings. Hi, Miss Wall. Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. Hi, 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 Everybody, Hi, Reverend Susan. Hey, no, I was just waving silently. Hi, 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 All right, it is time for our first hymn. Um, a bit of a note about the music today before we all sing together. Carson Kuman is our guest musician today. Many of you guys know him. He's visited the church um, many times, from what I understand. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting him for the first time, and we've been working together. He was scheduled to perform in person this Sunday at the church, and then we were quarantined, so he agreed to uh be a part of our virtual music making situation and recorded the hymns and offertory and postlude for today um he was going to join us in person but unfortunately the harvard service had to be restructured due to national events and he has to go monitor the music um in real time so our first hymn is we would be one number 318 and Raise up your voices wherever you are.
remember a poem by Joy Harjo. Remember the sky you were born under. Know each of the stars' stories. Remember the moon. Know she is. Know who she is. I met her in a bar once in Iowa City. Remember the sun's birth at dawn. That is the strongest point of time. Remember sundown and the giving away tonight. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are evidence of her life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father, he is also your life. Remember the earth whose skin you are, red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth, we are earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life, who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk to them, listen to them, they are alive poems. Remember the wind, remember her voice. She knows the origin of this universe. I heard her singing Kiowa dance songs at the corner of Fourth and Central once. Remember that you are all people and that all people are you. Remember that you are this universe and that this universe is you. Remember that all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember that language comes from this. Remember the dance that language is, that life is. Remember. Thank you, Jack. That was so beautifully read. Thank you so much. Medicine. Please join me now for a time of meditation and reflection. Just uh, put your feet on the ground, lower your eyes, move your iPhone away from you, and just be present here in this virtual space together that matters so much to all of us. These days of burning injustice and grief, these days of rage and sorrow, these days of truth without the veils, these days when injustice calls all of our names, grant us the courage to see ourselves in the light of these times. May we mark this time as ours. May we mark ourselves as seen. May we mark these days with our names, shoulders back, ready to be claimed by this time of times. Ready to call this burning building our home ready to reclaim from the ashes what is sacred and be part of the wind that blows the rest from the pages of this story. Amen. It is the time in our service for joys and concerns or grief and gratitude as I have come to think of them. If we call this part of our theology, the seventh principle, the interconnected web of all existence of which we are part reminds us that our grief and gratitude lives in all of us that we share it that it is part of our humanity together if there is anything you would like to lift up today please either unmute yourself and begin or if that it feels complicated raise your hand and we will do our best to unmute you this is your time I have a concern uh, in watching the news, which I've been trying to avoid. I can't help but see what's going on in the world and in our country. And I wonder if there's some way that uh, all of us can get together to do a little bit more for our community. Because I think it starts with us. 
Thank you, Lydia. Just to let you know um, that tomorrow there is an event, a protest, um, a, so a meeting of solidarity at Tom Nevers, um, a car event. And I don't have that flyer with me, um, but we will, um, Sue has it. And when she's able to find it, perhaps Sue, you could just show it on the screen. Is that possible? That particular, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare you for that. You don't have to do it at this moment. Even if you get it by the end, Sue, that's fine. The other thing that's happening is that we at the Immigration Resource Center are writing a grant that we submitted on Friday to help immigrants on island who you know, didn't get the stimulus check or the unemployment benefits. And we're asking for $100,000 to distribute to uh, folks on island and immigrants on island in need. And if there's anything else that you think of or any other way that you would like to do something together, please let me know, let it be heard. Let's form a, you know, we can just meet on Zoom together to brainstorm if you'd like to. I am here with my mind and heart open and I know you are too. So please let this conversation continue. Thank you, Lydia. Yes, Carl, can you, un yep, you've unmuted. Yep, go ahead. I'm unmuted. <clears throat> On Monday, uh, last Monday, uh, we welcomed um, a second cousin of mine to the world, um, Elena Freeborn Ritchie. She was born in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, mother and baby are doing well, and her, her grandfather is my Uncle Sam, who's dying of Alzheimer's disease, but he was able to hold uh, and meet Elena this week. And I got some pictures from my um, cousins about this. And it's just a wonderful thing because we wanted him to make 80 years old and hold his granddaughter, my second cousin. Um, so we're thrilled to have her uh, in this world. And she's a little bundle of joy, um, seven pounds, 15 ounces. So she's a big girl. And um, <laughs> so it's mother and baby are doing well. And we welcome her. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. We welcome her with you, Carl. Anyone else today who would like to lift up grief or gratitude, joy or concern? Anything on your mind or in your hearts? Kat. Um, I said earlier before everybody joined, I've just I'm I was really looking forward to the service in particular because um of everything that's going on it's so just been sad and angry and frustrated and um and um it's just nice to be with all of you and i wanted to share something that i learned on um this this weekend would have been my 25th college reunion um, and I was on a Zoom call um, with a few of my classmates um, and um, learned this thing um, <laughs> from one of them and it's a it's a physical thing so what you do is everybody at home if you're in the gallery view reach out your arms um, <laughs> like this and try to connect them with the person next to you. Um, and it's it's a virtual hug. <laughs> Laura. Oh, I feel it, I feel it. <laughs> so it makes it makes me feel better. So thank you. Thank you, Kat. Thank you for your dear open heart and all you give to so many of us. Thank you, Kat. Please join me now for a moment of silence. And we ask that our broken grieving hearts be held in this embrace so much more than virtual is our embrace. How we have learned to make our embrace wider through the loving one another, through arguing with one another, through hoping and 
trying and meeting and blessing one another, how this embrace is strong enough to carry our worry and pain at this time and our gratefulness and joy at this time, living side by side as they always do. Thank you for being together. Amen. Now we'll sing our middle hymn. Um, this song has really touched me uh, in the past couple of weeks. Um, it's perfect for our times. We give thanks, number 1010. And the lyrics are, it's short, so I'll read them. The lyrics are, we give thanks for this precious day, for all gathered here and those far away, for this time we share with love and care. We give thanks for this precious day. We'll sing it three times. Um, and as we're singing, remember that when you breathe to sing the next phrase, you're breathing at the same time as everybody else. So that keeps us connected, even though we're far away. Thank you, choir and Nigel, so much for the way you're showing up right now. I loved what you said, Nigel, that before each new phrase, we all take a breath at the same time and that this connects us no matter where we are. Thank you for your ministry, choir and Nigel. Thank you so very much. Our minds and hearts are so busy right now. What a time of feeling both help, helpless tender and full of rage, watching, feeling, knowing the fierce injustice of racism as it boils over and burns us all down, listening to those who say we must all take responsibility for our rage and others who say, you feel angry about burning buildings? You think folks should be more restrained? Their restraint has only brought them shorter lifespans and death while jogging. And still others who invoke us to pray, to meditate, to let all of this endemic pandemic flow over us while keeping our calm. Trying to write, trying to learn, trying to increase my bandwidth, trying to be present in it all, trying to give no quarter to the more wild woman within me 
that entreats me to join her on the street screaming, the world is on fire, the world is on fire. Trying to remember today that every part of this earth is part of us and that all we are part of deserves honest, time-consuming reflection. Trying to see the beauty while feeling the grief, the raging while feeling the peace, the grief inside the heat of the flames, and looking for tasks that keep the days and hours separated and in their places. I've heard from many of you that you are also organizing, culling, reviewing, throwing away. My area of access is books. I have so many books. Scanning my bookshelves for what I can pull out for take it or leave it. I came to one, I came across one called I Remain Yours by Christopher Hager. Hager has published civil war letters from soldiers to mothers, wives, and sweethearts, and from all of them back to soldiers. Reading them is heartbreaking and heart opening. These letters, re letters written by a hand that knew that love and beauty must be expressed no matter how haltingly, no matter if pencil had never graced paper to do more than write a list, no matter if schoolrooms were left too early to help out at home. These letters were love letters written while acts of brutality were being committed and received by the very same hands. Reading these letters, in their halting grammar and their misspelled words was so, so presencing. We all define what is worth saving and loving and treasuring, and we redefine it as life insists we take in more of what is. On our trip to California in February this year, while the virus was heating up and we were all hugging and going on unawares, Gary and I left our mountain cabin and wood stove where we had to shovel out from the big storm the night before and went to, well, first Mary Beth and Jack's where we saw Lyndon Craig as well and loved it so much. And then we went to San Diego where it was 75 degrees to volunteer in a homeless shelter. Boots became sandals, winter coats replaced with t-shirts, blankets moved from over us to under us on park slopes. The homeless shelter we visited was built in 2017 by the city of San Diego and is supported by the local government. It is a tension membrane structure, a huge dome with fiberglass insulation in it. It's this stretched membrane shelters 325 folk for those who identify male and female or as genderqueer. We were far from home news of the virus was beginning to build. We were getting anxious as we read the paper in the sun sipping Earl Grey tea in the green of San Diego. It's hard, isn't it? To remember that so much pain we experience is a pain that only privilege can offer. And yet, and yet we must feel it, we must. There is no alternative to not feeling except for numbing and I have yet to meet a numbing technique that is sustainable. So Gary and I were getting nervous as we approached this huge dome of a homeless shelter in the middle of what used to be a football field. Outside the light filled dome is a tarp that covers maybe 500 yards from the entrance. And under this shade are chairs around tables and long trailers that are sh showers and bathrooms. And all of this sits behind a gate. The volunteer at this gate wants to know who we are and why we have come. I am grateful to him for his vigilance. And what I really want to share right now, by, beyond the story of the manager who was homeless with seven children three years ago, beyond the story of one of the men who came from prison and could not work again because he had a felony record, but knew he would find his way because he had found a way inside of himself. Beyond the volunteer who comes with her child because she wants him to know that most gains are unearned blessings. Beyond the man who told me that he thought he was a mountain unto himself until he crumbled. 
beyond all of these stories, I want you to, to tell you about two women that I will call Alice and Alex. Alice is tall and slim and keeps her clothes clean and darned. She stands with shoulders back. She will not be cowered by lack. She and I talked for some time at dinner, dinners delivered by local restaurants who deliver all three meals. Alice spoke with conviction, her beautiful face uplifted to a vision of a future that sustained her. Her story I will save for another time. Seated beside us was another woman whose clothes were dirty and ripped, whose chin was unshaven, makeup smeared, hair uncombed. Her name is Alex. She is transgender. Alice introduces me to Alex, who turns up and turns away from me the minute that Alice introduced me. But Alice says to me, picking up her tray to bring into the kitchen in her beautifully polished shoes, give her a minute. It takes her a bit, but she'll turn round. Give her a minute. It takes her a bit, but she'll turn round. This simple love, this simple acceptance, this embrace between those whose presentation of self was so different, this touched me then and still. What love are you seeing now? What hatred are you working to balance? What is this battlefield teaching you? And are you recording these findings? Are you writing letters and in journals that will preserve this love and dignity and fear and horror? that lift up who you are now and what you have decided is worthy of taking pen to paper. Grant Taylor was a rebel private home from Alabama on leave with his wife and child during the Civil War. When he had to return to duty, his wife took him in a buggy to the station. He stood and watched till the buggy was out of sight and he wrote to her the next day, Melinda, when you left me yesterday, I stood and watched you till the buggy did not look larger than a dog. And oh, how lonesome and how far from home I felt. It seemed for a while as if the light had died out in my heart. These were letters from people who did not have a romantic language, who had not been schooled in letters. And these letters changed who we became. Melinda wrote back, Grant, I don't think I can feel worse than I did when I got home and opened the doors and saw your coat and hat and the rest of things you had wore while you were home. As Hager writes in his book, I Remain Yours, and don't you love that title, I Remain Yours? I would have titled this sermon, I Remain Yours, if it had come to me on time. As Hager wrote in that book, during times of war, like the Civil War, letter writing played a central role in shaping the experience of the war. Isn't that beautiful? Letter writing shaped the experience of the war. These letters shaped and reshaped the emotional bonds that sustained or drained the men and women of the wartime nation. These letters talked about separation, love, death, fear, and beauty, and how it was transforming them. How are you transforming now? What story are you writing with your life? People will gather our letters and journals in year to come, years to come to see who we were now, how we made it through this, which, what touched us enough so that we, we would pick up our pens and write. We are here now. We are the people of this time. What matters now? Who matters now? What will, words will you use to speak these truths? What introductions are you making and receiving? What and who are you turning away from and toward? Me, I'm writing about growing weary and full of hope too, hoping that seeing makes a difference in our actions to come and our actions of today. Learning newly, learning with a more raw mind and heart, 
that the place where self and other meet is holy ground and that it always was. May this time, the holy ground of this time, call us to preserve what is worthy, to turn round to the stranger and to tear down what needs hatred and segregation to stand. May we come to know this time of ours as we will be known by this time and decide who we will be together on this long walk home. Amen. Please join me now for a moment of silence. On today's offering, I ask you to be generous, not because you have so much to give, not because it's easy to give, not because we need to give to stay here together, but because who we are and what we are and how we help each other become more than we are matters today and every day. Because we are each other's teachers, because we are each other's students, because we are each other, I ask you to give to sustain this being together that keeps us all together. The offering will now be virtually collected and Sue will tell us a little more about that. So before I do that, I wanted to share this poster that Linda asked me to share with all of you. It's on our social media, but it's here and it's, this is what's inviting people to come to Tom Nevers Field tomorrow night in your cars to stay distant. Um, and I think it's just going to be a, a rally and then a gathering of like-minded people. Um, I believe it's been organized by some high school students. So I think it'll be vibrant and hopefully will foster a sense of community that we're all looking for. And then for your gift today, um, this is just our UU website, unitarianchurchnantucket.org. There's a PayPal link if that's what you prefer to give with. And also you can use our new um, Tithely system. And when you click on that, it brings you to a page that looks just like this. You fill in. Don't forget the gray arrow where you can ask you to put in your address. And then you can enter your card number. And you can choose from um, one of these menus, drop down menu items. So if you're offering your Sunday offering or your pledge, you can note it here. And that's it. Thank you, everybody, for everyone who's been giving and for sending in checks and the people are being really generous and we thank you so much. And for the offertory today, Carson has recorded a piece by our friend Marsha Hempel. Um, and this is Carson at his home organ playing Caprice.
And I just want to say how rare it is that we get to watch an organist up close like that. Only in the virtual world do we get the opportunity. So thank you, Carson, even though you're not here. Ah, yes. I always forget. Right after the offertory comes the final hymn, number 121, We Will Build a Land. Um, let me say too, if you don't have the words for the hymns and you would like them, just email me or leave a message here for Sue in the chat room and we can add you to our email and you get a copy of, of the hymns in the order of service if you would like to receive them. Bless you, my dears. May we turn our grief into words of justice. May we turn our aching into love. May the veil that is dropping between us and within us show us truths that make us noble, truths that bring us to our knees, truths that undo us and do us up again. May this time keep us coming here to bless and be blessed and send us back into the world to be the blessings that we have come to be. Amen. Please join Gary now in the extinguishing of the chalice. I'll just repeat it once. I carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. And now for the real thing. <laughs> Carry, Carry the, the flame, flame of, of peace, peace and love, and love until, we, until meet we meet again. And the postlude today is again our friend Carson, and this is Prelude and Fugetta, Fugetta in F.
by Marcus Nickel, Carson at his home organ. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for being here, for participating. Jack, thank you for that poem, the choir, Nigel, Sue, everyone who's here. Thank you so much for all that you add to this world and this time together. Oh, my love, time for breakout rooms. I hope that you enjoy. And I'm always here. If you'd like to chat in between, give me a call anytime. Bye, my friends. <laughs> I look awesome. I don't know. You can unmute and say hi while I set up the breakout rooms. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hi, Hello. Hi, hi. everyone. Hey, everybody. Hi, Morning. Kathy. Hi, Dennis. Hey, 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 Susan. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Morning. Hi. Hello. Hello. It's still morning. Hi, Nancy. Hi. It is still morning. This is Mark. Hello. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Yes. Gorgeous. Bob and Loretta. Perfect picture. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Fuller. They're just twenty. Nancy, are you going to introduce us? I know. Oh, Hi, everybody. Are we in a breakout room? Yes. yes. Not yet. <laughs> hey, Dennis. And we're still all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How you doing, man? Good. Nice to see everybody. Hello. Nice Hello, Peter. Hi. 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 This is my friend Mark. It's a beautiful day in Tallahassee. Uh, beautiful day in Tallahassee. Hey, Hi, yes, it is. How are you, Craig? <laughs> Hi, it's good to see you. It's good, good to, see, to you. see you. Yeah. So, Brian and Susie, if you can stay for the breakout room, we, we're trying to get into your breakout room. <laughs> it, we made a special request. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we're in breakout room one. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 